Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Star Wars is a great escape, especially when things here on Earth are looking grim or just a tad bit boring. Most fans have probably thought of what it would be like to be living in such a galaxy. And so today we're going to talk about 10 things you probably didn't realize you'd have to deal with if you lived in the Star Wars galaxy. The tax deadline has been extended for most people in the United States due to the pandemic and that's great news for me because I am self-employed and we have one of the most complicated tax codes in the world. I have to pay taxes not only to the federal government, but also to state governments as well. There is a lot of redundancy here, but at least it's not as bad as the Star Wars universe, where if you are a citizen of the Republic, you'll have to deal with your uh, provincial government, your national government, your planetary government, and then your galactic government. It's going to be a complete headache. It's going to mean more taxes, more regulations, and more forms to fill out. That is, if you decide to be a legitimate business person. In my opinion, when a society develops so much bureaucracy that it becomes immoral, it no longer becomes necessary to follow the laws. During the golden age of the Republic, the central government became very hands-off in how they approached governing the galaxy. This was partly due to their inability to actually project military force because they didn't really have a military. Most of their powers came through military and economic means. That means depending on where you are, you might not be protected by the central government from things like murder or slavery or possession by an ancient dark lord. There are just certain areas of the galaxy that are gonna be PVP enabled and you better know when you're in one of those zones. Because people who wait around for the Republic military for help generally don't survive and lose all of their loot. It's a pretty terrible and scary thought that the government you're paying taxes to is neither capable or present. And fear is the underlying emotion that drives most government conspiracy theories, whether people realize it or not. People like to imagine that the government is this all-seeing and all-capable entity that is constantly spying on your every move. But the reality is much simpler and even more terrifying. The guys at the top have no idea what's going on. The only thing in the galaxy that will try to protect you 100% of the time is you. Unless you're on some bad spice. Here on Earth, people have different dietary concerns. Some Jews follow a kosher diet, some Muslims follow a halal diet. Vegans also have their own religious dietary concerns, and celiacs stay away from gluten. It means when they pack, they also bring specially prepared food for their entire trip. In Star Wars, most people have strict dietary concerns if they are away from their home planet. When people with specific dietary concerns travel, it's actually a huge hassle. It's something that most of us might not think about. Humans have a pretty fragile digestive system. I mean, you probably know this if you've ever eaten Chipotle or have had sugar-free gummy bears. And those are edible foods that we're talking about that are made specifically for human consumption. In Star Wars, not only are there a variety of different carbon-based life forms, you also have life forms that are not even carbon-based, like Minox. They're silicon-based and can live in vacuum and survive on eating starship conduits. So while here on Earth it's very common for travelers to try new exotic foods and kind of broaden their palates, if you try to attempt to do that in Star Wars, you could very much end up eating something that your body cannot break down and that will lead to severe consequences, including death. If you can't find edible food, maybe you'll last a few weeks. If you can't find drinkable water, you might last two or three days. But if you can't find oxygen on the planet you're traveling to, or maybe the gravity is 50 times heavier than here on Earth, you'll probably last a few seconds at most. There are tons of different planets with different environments and atmospheres and species on them. Some aliens like the Skakoans were methane breathers, which meant that they basically had to wear pressurized suits everywhere they went off planet. So while technically the entire galaxy will be available to you if you have a hyperspace enabled ship, it's not a good idea to travel to every planet. And if you do travel to a planet that is hostile to humans, make sure to wear the right protection or uh, reserve the right lodgings that have the right atmosphere for you to be able to survive in. A lot of supernatural stuff here on Earth, whether it's ghosts or aliens or both, like Michael Jackson, can be explained through scientific means. But in the Star Wars galaxy, be prepared for supernatural occurrences to happen all the time, thanks to the Force and genetic diversity. 
Now, the force is an energy that surrounds everything in the galaxy and can be manipulated at the molecular level by force users. This allows people to shoot electricity out of their hands or levitate entire starships. Of course, there are plenty of people in the galaxy who don't believe in the Force or the Jedi and Sith, but there are usually haters who just are stuck at home on their couch typing away in the comment section on Holotube. But for the rest of us who do believe, this means that there will be superhumans living amongst us. And not only Force users, but also crazy aliens with abilities that we might have never seen. So we will feel more vulnerable because there will literally be gods and demons living amongst us. Naturally, when you have a lot of different species coming together and a bunch of different cultures coming together, you're gonna have some tension. In the Star Wars galaxy, we're talking about millions of different cultures and genetic backgrounds that will surely clash and be at odds with each other. Stereotypes about specific groups of humans can oftentimes be hurtful and uh, create negative interactions between people. I mean, humans at the end of the day are all so similar uh, that we can usually find common ground. But the stereotypes that we have for certain alien species will actually be more helpful in keeping us safe. Because there is a huge variety of alien species in the galaxy and not all of them are friendly. If you know that Anzats, for instance, have an unquenchable thirst for a human brain soup, then you'll most likely avoid them at all costs. You'll also probably quickly realize that it's smart to avoid anything from Dathomir. People from that planet typically go to the dark side and are great assassins. And then there are the Ewoks who seem small and cuddly and perhaps would make a perfect companion for your child, but they're actually highly evolved, killing cannibalistic machines. So in Star Wars, it is really important to know all of your alien stereotypes. This will prevent you from, say, asking directions from an Umbaran, because most likely that Umbaran is gonna take you into a dark alley and shank you with a vibroblade and take all of your credits. Remember, stereotypes about aliens, good. Stereotyping humans, not good. In space, people dress differently, perhaps to account for zero gravity. This is why George Lucas told Gary Fisher the first day of shooting that she can't wear a bra under her dress. Now, you might be thinking, Alan, isn't that sexual harassment in the Mewtwo era? Well, I would counter that there is no underwear in space. Okay, back to diapers don't count. They're essential equipment that prevents you from swimming in your own waist. No, but seriously, underwear in many ways is a symbol of repression. And in an advanced society like the one we see in Star Wars, it makes a lot of sense that these advanced beings would throw away their private part prisons. Underwear is restrictive and ultimately limits an individual from reaching their true potential. The possibilities in Star Wars are endless only because of this lack of underwear. This is not a political message, but simply the truth. In Star Wars, you have a high number of firearm ownership. This is partly due to the Republic's lack of a military force. In most of the Adoram territories, aside from local security, there wasn't much in the form of police or any authority. And even then, those frontier lawmen that did exist oftentimes had questionable methods of uh, carrying out their business. So every experienced traveler in the galaxy will most likely have a blaster at their hip and a few more laser cannons on their starship. And so unless you don't mind being robbed constantly and being enslaved by armed bandits, I highly recommend you arm yourself and figure out how to use that blaster as soon as possible. Earth is extremely precious to all human beings. And if we were able to find another world that can sustain human life, it would also be extremely precious to us. In the Star Wars galaxy, there is still that appreciation for life and planets that can sustain life, but certain individuals in the name of peace and stability are more than willing to scare populations into following their directives. And so, unfortunately, it's common for entire cities, planets, and even systems to be destroyed by super weapons. These devastating attacks are more horrific than anything we've ever seen on Earth with casualties in the billions. And so when Alderaan becomes an asteroid field, that becomes a new disaster from which all disasters are compared to. And when you set the bar so high, everything else seems trivial in comparison. There definitely will be a lot of people in the Star Wars galaxy that are desensitized to all the suffering out there because of it. Thanks to the free trade zone in the Outer Rim, corporations and stars have become increasingly powerful in the vacuum where government should be. 
several of the largest conglomerates in Star Wars actually have representation in the Senate, and their companies are treated as member states. They also hold a massive amount of territory and have a large amount of citizens slash employees. It's not something that we've seen here on Earth yet, but it's very likely coming soon. The thing that separates corporate states from conventional nations is that these entities are highly interested in increasing profit margin above all else. They also have a more parasitic relationship with their citizens and in some cases rely on indentured servitude or straight up slavery to keep costs to a minimum. When you move to a new city, it might take you a few weeks to get used to things. When you move to a new country, it'll take even longer. But when you move to a new galaxy, well, you're probably going to need some help adjusting. I hope these 10 things that we talked about today will prepare you somewhat for your new challenges in the Star Wars galaxy. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.